Hey guys, uh, it is Tuesday night, 7 p.m. This is the Awakened Message. Welcome. Um, we're in my garage tonight. A beautiful scenery right there. I just wanted to be outside. It's a beautiful day. Um, and with these past, the last couple days of tsunami rains, I just wanted to be outside instead of being stuck inside like I was. Um, hey guys, thanks for joining us. A few quick announcements. Um, check out htcfamily.org slash coronavirus for updates. Um, we put updates out there for the ministries, for things that are ha happening and changing uh, with everything that's been going on. So seriously, this isn't, I'm not just telling you to do it so we can get like page views, I'm telling you to do it so you can understand the information that's going on, what we're going to be doing. Uh, other than that, oh, sorry. We also have a men's group starting um, as well. Go on the website, fill out a form. Uh, we'll get, get you plugged into that. That's an awesome way uh, to be um, involved with men. And also we have a thing called micro campuses starting. Sorry, I forgot some announcements. Micro campuses. They're going to be essentially uh, services at each other's houses. Me, me and Pastor Kyle are reaching out to people that we believe have the gift of shepherding and that can shepherd in the congregation with us. And we're going to have them leading groups of 10 people um, in their homes. And you guys are going to be doing church together at home as well as, as a corporate body as the the laws and things unfold and change. So uh, be on the lookout for that. People are going to start inviting you to groups. So be aware of what's happening. Um, with that, let's dive in. Let's dive in. I feel really weird about praying at the camera. So I'm not going to open a prayer. I just know the Lord is going to bless this time because he's faithful. And I hope that you're praying that uh, God is going to move in this time as I was before this. So we're going to hop right in. Mark 2. I personally have been going through Mark in this season. Um, not, not, not the whole time. I've been going through Psalm for most of it. Psalms for most of it. And then Mark for the past week or two. I'm at Mark, um, Mark 7 now. I do, I do a chapter about a day or every other day I do a chapter. Uh, I guess it'd be about every other day I do a chapter now. Um, or every day I do half a chapter. Or if something strikes me, I pause there. I just meditate on that. And I'm going back a bit to Mark 2 and to verse 15. If you have a Bible, open it up. Mark 2, 15. That's we're going to be reading tonight. And it says this, this is when Jesus calls Levi to be one of his disciples. Sorry for the backgrounds, like getting really white and getting crazy. And I'm just going to stand here. That seems to be better. Um, Mark 2, about now I look really red. Mark 2, verse 15. And as he, re as he reclined up at table in his house, many tax collectors and sinners were reclining with Jesus and his disciples. For there were many who followed him. And the scribes of the Pharisees when they saw that he was eating with sinners and tax collectors, said to his disciples, Why does he eat with, sit with tax collectors and sinners? And when Jesus heard it, he said to them, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick, I came, but those who are sick, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. Sorry for my staggered reading there. I find this funny because I have, I personally have been caught saying something about somebody that I did not want them to, um, here, and I did not want them. Yeah, but sorry, one second, guys. Yeah. Where's the nails? The nails. The nails are inside in the drawer with the forks and stuff. Inside in what? With the forks and stuff. Oh. The hammer and nail both in there. Okay. Okay. Sweet. This is live stream. This is what happens. This is real life. You're in my life right now. Um. Yeah. So I've been caught saying something about someone, or or maybe a sly comment I shouldn't have. And the person's heard me before, and that was super awkward. I got rebuked. He got called out. Um, I had to repent. It was terrible. I wish it would never happen again to me or to anyone I know. It is the worst feeling on the planet to have someone overhear something you did not intend them to hear. And it's also the worst feeling on the planet to realize you shouldn't have been saying it in the first place, and you're stupid for saying it. Now, I picture that with, the, with, with, with Jesus and his scribes. You know, they're, they're talking to the disciples. It's clear that the scribes are talking to the disciples and not to Jesus. It says it. Now, Jesus, it says, as Jesus overheard, he commented. I, I feel like that was probably maybe a gauntlet thrown moment or a mic drop moment where they're whispering. And he's like, oh, to answer your question, this is why. And I'm sure he spoke up a little bit and kind of interjected himself into the conversation. And I bet they just cat got their tongue. They were choking and swallowing. They didn't know what to do. I guarantee, I guarantee it. I guarantee it. Now, those moments suck. Those moments suck so bad. And, and that's not my focus tonight. My focus isn't that they got caught saying something they shouldn't say. However, yeah, don't gossip. Keep your mouth shut. Don't gossip. It's not a good thing. Don't gossip with your mouth. Don't gossip with your mind. Don't think things about people that aren't true. 
Look at them as sons and daughters, okay? Don't gossip. That's another time. We're going to move on. What is the point of tonight? What am I saying? Jesus was revolutionary, right? He was revolutionary. He, he went against the grain, but he wasn't, I don't think it was supposed to be that way. I, I think he intended for his, the Jews to, to follow the word correctly, to love the Lord, to recognize the Messiah. But sadly, they weren't going to and he knew that. And so it was a salmon swimming upstream against the flow, against the current. And I feel like that's going to happen again here pretty soon. Um, I feel like it's so, people are walking by, it's so funny. They're looking at me and I'm holding the book and I'm like getting really hyped at a little screen here. That's hilarious. Um, I feel like it's going to happen again. I was praying the other day at church with everybody. I was like, Lord, at our, when we had corporate gathering, I was like, Lord, like shake us up. Do not let us be people who are afraid, who are afraid, hey Rosie, who are afraid to eat with sinners. And he showed me this picture of a church. He's building a church that's not afraid of getting their hands cut up by cleaning off the broken pots that are coming in. Scripture talks about us being jars of clay that he's filled with his glory. Well, guys, before Christ were broken, with Christ were made whole. So what he's saying, what I feel like God was saying to me was, Wes, I'm looking for Christians who aren't worried about what people are going to think about them, but are more worried about loving the lost and dealing the, with the lost than they are about dealing with the righteous and being judged. And that, 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 that we have a mandate to clean up and put back together the broken jars so that God can fill them with his glory and make them jars of clay for a good purpose. Now, that's what I see Jesus doing here. I see him dealing with the broken jars, the sinners, the tax collectors, like dealing with the broken jars. He's dealing with them and the, and the religious people, okay? The people who are supposed to know better, the people who practice church, the people who, who, who are Christian, if you would. Not, not then, obviously, but in today's terms. The people who go to temple, who know the word, read the word, copy the word, supposed to live the word, those are the ones that go, what are you doing? And I, I guarantee Jesus had a little bit of a twist in his voice when he said, I came for the sick, not the healthy. And I'm sure maybe he kept his gaze a little bit longer and locked eyes a little bit longer of like, what are you gonna say to that? I'm, I'm God, like we're done here. You've missed it all. And he says, I came not to call the righteous, but sinners. And I believe we get so caught up in our righteous bubble that we forget that you were a sinner. You were heading straight to hell. You had a bullet train ticket straight to the pit before Christ got a hold of you. I might offense people, but that's just the way it is. You didn't save you. You're not God. You're not that holy. You can't save yourself. You were saved by grace, yet we don't extend grace. We are so quick to judge sometimes. Guys, I have a challenge. Coming out of this quarantine, coming out of this season, coming out of these things that have totally changed our life, like Christ did with the, with the Jews, totally changed everything, flipped it on its head. I feel like that's what's happened with the church again. Guys, we've been flipped on our heads. Things are changed. Things are going to be different. Don't be the scribes. Oh, dear God, don't be the scribes. Don't be the one Jesus rebukes and says, you're missing it. Be the disciples there with Christ. I love how the disciples didn't answer. Jesus didn't let them answer. He answered for them. He said, hey, you, you watch out. These are my boys. This is why I'm doing this. Because I'm God and these people need salvation. Back off. Obviously, that's Wes's paraphrase. I'm a really intense guy. So that's Wes's paraphrase of what Jesus said. But I want to be the disciples. With him at the table. I don't want to be someone living in sin, but I want to be the disciples living with Jesus at that table going, man, ministering to the lost, ministering to the broken jars, saying, hey, I got love and freedom. And not always just starting with this, but starting with love and equity and relationship that I can show them Christ and show them who's in me. Guys, I think there's a challenge from God to the church. I really do. I heard this written somewhere. I don't remember what it was or where it was, but someone said they had a, a vision and uh, he saw people in the church, all sorts of people, committing sins in, the, in the, the pews, like doing their sins in church. And it was, a, it was a metaphor, I believe, for who God's bringing in. How are we going to deal with them when they're in? Man, we're, sometimes we're so sin-focused instead of so, so righteous-focused. We don't see the big picture. We see the, oh, hey, Rosie. We see the little picture, guys. We see so quick. We don't see, 
when, when, when you're a sculptor, for instance, what do you see? A piece of rock or do you see what you're trying to sculpt in the rock? You see the rock initially, but then you look past the rock and you go, this is what the rock can become. This is the potential in the rock and I am going to see that potential come to fruition. I'm not just going to say this is a rock. It's I want a stone statue of a horse and this is a rock. Well, it's not a stone statue right now, so screw the rock. Forget the rock. Guys, the, the stone horse comes from the rock, but it takes a master sculptor and chiseler like Christ to, to work it out. Don't think you were born a stone horse statue. You better believe you were born a big fat piece of rock and Christ chiseled you into the image of himself when he saved you into grace and by faith. Guys, let's be humble as we minister in this season. Things are changing. You're going to probably get offended. I might get offended because God is going to flip the church on his head even more. He's bringing the lost so they can be frowned. He's bringing the sick to make them healthy. Guys, we get thrown off when we're healthy and a sick person comes into our room. Think how much more you might get thrown off when we're spiritually healthy, but a sick, healthy, a sick spiritual person is going to come in. Don't be offended. Ask God how you can help, how you can love, how you can be a hand, how you can be the hammer and the nail as he chisels out what he wants to make in them. See, these scribes missed it. These scribes missed the stone horse statue and they just saw a piece of rock. They couldn't see past religion. They couldn't see past the basics. So, therefore, they couldn't see the end and Christ rebukes them on the spot right there. Guys, don't be the scribes. Don't be the Pharisees. Be the disciples. Be like Christ. Be the one whose table is always open to eat with whoever needs to be eaten with. Love whoever needs to be loved. Don't let the judgment or condemnation of others dictate how you show Christ. Because when you answer to God, you don't want to give that answer. I know I loved you, Lord, but I wasn't like you because my friends, they wouldn't have approved. A challenge. Maybe that's not someone who loves God. I think God's calling us to a real place. No more excuses. No more, well, this is where I'm at, God. We're done. We're done. Jesus, for instance, all the disciples, the ones that were fishing, John, okay, or, or Levi, for instance, the tax collector. Jesus recognized where they were and he called them out of it. Not just their job, but also their whole lifestyle, their whole habits. He didn't just say, yes, I'm going to meet you here and we're going to work here. God was, Jesus was like ready. He had a plan. He was expectant, man. In three years, he's going to die and be crucified. Man, he was, let's, let, let's go, guys. Let's get it. Let's take Christ at his word, trust who he is, and let's be the church and go find the lost and bring him into the body of Christ so they can experience the fullness of heaven now and eternity to come. Guys, the church, it, it, it can't fly anymore. Well, this is just where I'm at, going slow, moving slow, poke space, be a snail's pace. What we have to do is go, God, this is where I'm at. I see where you want me to be. Let's get there. Guys, have the stone horse in mind or forever you're only just going to see a piece of rock. Do it with others and do it with yourself. Guys, Christ wants to chill you to his image just like everybody else. Scripture says, the will of the Father is that none should perish, but all should come to the knowledge of him. Guys, it's big. Guys, it's serious. And it's about time we stop saying we see a bunch of rocks and we start saying we see a bunch of potential sons and daughters, even with ourselves. You're a sinner saved by grace, but now you're a saint redeemed. Be done with the mindset of depravity and slavery to your former self. You are free in Christ. Let's live like it. Free to love, not free to judge. Let's be Christ. Have a good night, guys. I'll see you tomorrow at 7 a.m. Check in tonight at 9 p.m. for Pastor Kim's nightly devotional. Can't wait to see you guys. Um, it's been good. It's been a good time. God's been speaking and changing and challenging. And man, he's been chiseling off rock chunks that shouldn't be there in my life. And he's making be more into the image of him. Challenge you guys, don't be offendable, be moldable. Don't be hard clay on the potter's wheel, be clay full of water so he can mold you into whatever he wants. All right, let's be done with us and be about him. And I'm serious, let's be done with us. Have a good night.